So this footage is from John Phillips, who was a Life magazine uh, photographer. How did you know him? Well, he was a friend of Sherman's. They worked at Life magazine together. And so, you know, like I said, Sherman knew everybody. And he just, one phone call, that was it. So uh, you've never met him here through Lee? No, or... I never met him. I never knew of him. And, and Sherman said, yeah, we got to go see John Phillips. And did you know who he was at that point? Did you know how much of an amazing photographer he was? No, I had not a clue. I really had to hit the ground running with him. But fortunately, Sherman gave me the most incredible briefing as we threaded our way through the New York traffic to meet him. What was life like in Budapest at the time? Completely crazy. For instance, uh, the black market was incredible. Now, if you had an American dollar, for American dollar, you could get $32 of shillings. If you took those $32 of shillings to a finance officer, you got $32 in dollars. Now, if you could go up and down those two flights of stairs long enough, you could buy a fur coat for a dollar. You'd see all people sitting on these, you know, the steam, columns of steam coming out, sitting on these in the street to be warm. You had Russians patrolling. I mean, you would have Russians, uh, I remember, uh, Zila Heva playwright telling me, you know, really Russians are very nice people. I mean, they, they like culture. I said, well, how do you mean they like culture? Well, he said, you know, I got, a, I got captured by a Russian patrol at night. They stripped me. I was on my underwear. One of them knifed me, and I said, I am a writer. They said, in, intellectual, and let me go. You see, so they really aren't bad. So you had this. <clears throat> and I must say, the great problem with the Russians was they'd be drunk. So if they ran into somebody, well, you know, we might ask for papers and sort of uh, go into somebody's house, knock a kerosene lamp down, set fire to the house. I mean, it was all done in a friendly way very often, but it could be pretty disastrous. And you had in the middle of this, we were the law, if you like. I mean, these Russians were prowling around, they were directing traffic. You had uh, black marketeers. Uh, you had, it was a, a frontier. We used to eat together, I mean, we were, you know, it was a colleague, there were very few people to talk to because the American military mission was busy making money and uh, had very few other people to talk to. Give you an idea how crazy it was. <coughs> the park club was there and you had all these officers who were really hooping it up. And one day a pall of gloom settled down because the word had come but finally we would allow the wives back in to come to Budapest. Well, I can tell you what a catastrophe it was. And there was a rather well-known colonel who had his girlfriend. And when the wife arrived, he was sitting at a park club. He was having things. So funny, he got absolutely smashed. So he retired to the men's room. And coming back, completely oblivious that his wife was there, stumbles over his mistress's, ex-mistress's table, sits down with her, completely unaware that his wife was around. And you could imagine a fine to-do that was. So that was also the end of Budapest in another way. You described taking me to Execution. Yeah. The execution of the Prime Minister. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what, it was very interesting because uh, we went there at about seven and we were in a room next to where he was sitting. You see, I had photographed Bardoshi's wife about oh, three weeks before. She'd given an interview in the hopes my interview would save his life, which was, of course, fatuous. I remember he was shot at eight in the morning and with uh, Lee, we turned up at a police station where he was to be executed, near a prison. And when he went in, he said, you know, he's with his wife. His wife was this rather imposing woman. And you could imagine what it must have been like, you know, at the station saying goodbye is bad enough, but there you're sitting with your husband, you look at the clock, you know, at eight o'clock. His name was Bardoshi. He, he was sentenced to death because he was a prime minister who declared war on Russia. And of course, uh, he was uh, sentenced to death for that.